Hello everyone and welcome to this little tutorial. I'm Florian from the YouTube channel Beats Basteln and I was invited by Josh the audio programmer to make this tutorial for you because I told him about a nice framework for designing DSP algorithms um, which is this plugin actually Blue Cat Audio Plugin Script the problem is, it doesn't seem to be very well known, even though I think it's brilliant. Because you can test your DSP algorithm right in your door, you don't have to um, jump into the code and compile. Uh, I mean this works with code too, as you can see. But the only way to recompile this is by hitting on the reload script button. And then in it reloads within seconds. So this is a nice way to to test DSP of course the oops this was the wrong window the audio performance is pretty oh, in this case it's actually not that bad but it can go high pretty fast um, because this is more like a test bench and not really something where you would ma finish your plugins even though you could and you could export to VST but I won't go over this feature now because I think it's rather boring. What I find interesting is that you can just hit the edit script button and start editing your custom scripts. And I just made this little effect here to demonstrate that. As you have heard, it wasn't perfect, it had it has these little clicks in it everywhere, but you could hear that it is kind of a pitch shifter. So we are going to talk about a very um, easy pitch shifter now that is made in plugin script in less than 40 lines. At least in the pitch shifter class. But let's talk about the main script first. The main script includes the pitch shifter and it also shows the name. I could give it a name, by the way. And now I saved the script and now I can show you how when I press this, the new name will appear. Okay, that's what I meant with um, that you just have to click on the reload button instead of compiling again you can just um, change things very subtly or try something new like as if the parameter maybe has a bigger range and then hit the reload script and see what the parameter feels like now That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a pitch shifter at that range anymore. But it's cool. Let's turn it back. This is where I initialize the pitch shifter object. And you see that the pitch shifter object asks for a size where it will put the buffer to the size of the buffer. So um, at the moment, the size is just defined as sample rate divided by 30 and as you can see this is also a big difference to other frameworks there is no prepare to play method or anything you can just access the sample rate at any point you see in the process block there are the usual things the sample loop and the channel loop and um, we ask for the audio inputs yeah w it would make more sense to ask for the audio outputs but it, in this case it doesn't seem to make a difference However, what I wanted to say is, you can also go ahead and ask for the audio output in any other class without having to send that class the information with any method. And that makes the code a lot shorter. Of course, you would have to add this stuff when you port it to actual C++ later. But it's very nice to test things because everyone knows um, that this belongs somewhere else usually and it's like not really 
needed to um, add that to a little test bench framework. So I like how they reduced everything to the very most um, interesting stuff. So we could easily go ahead and try a different um, size for the for the pitch shifter. Now it's a very small pitch shifter. Or oh, let's make it even smaller and see how it behaves. Let's see. That's cool. Now it sounds a little bit like a sample and hold algorithm combined with some kind of filtering or something. So you um, really come up with um, peculiar stuff by being able to change parameters so fast. Because I feel like when you have to come up with that while you are in your actual IDE, you are sometimes too lazy to just change one number and hit compile again and then wait for minutes until it have compiled just to see if you finally like the numbers how they sit so this is a faster workflow um, so in the process block method uh, it gets the block data called data and this is the stuff where th everything is in we could also access other information from here like uh, data transport uh, get is playing and there we could say something like if data transport get is playing if this is true only then it should do everything but we couldn't test that now because if there's nothing playing then we would also don't hear the effect of the pitch shifter so I just wanted to show you that for so you see how easy stuff is sometimes and you can imagine that making tempo sync stuff is also very easy that way one little disadvantage about this framework by the way is that it doesn't have really huge objects like the FFT object from Juice so I can't experiment with FFT unless I at some point understand how FFT works so you can only test things in here that you actually understand mostly there's a little uh, exception, but I will come to that very soon. Then there is the update input parameters function that gets only called when an input parameter has been updated. By the way, if I wanted to add another input parameter, I would just uh, type in what it uh, should do here. For example, I could make an, uh, a gain, and then I could say gain is measured in decibels, and then I could go ahead say it has all these steps it goes from um, the minimum value is minus 12 and the maximum value is plus 12 and if I wanted to access that or like um, fill it with life I would just probably go here and say gain parameter yeah at this point I would need the formula to convert this to actual amplitude data but I don't have that uh, available right now and I don't want to google that while making a video but just so you know this is how you would add another parameter so nothing with unique pointers and stuff and of course, you can instantly che check out how it would be to um, automate it. Yeah. Um, so let's put this gain parameter away again because it's kind of confusing to see that while not being able to change anything with that but um, you have probably seen how powerful it is and everything 
So let's just keep it like that. Yeah, and the one uh, limitation of the demo version of plug and script is by the way that you can't have an unlimited amount of parameters, but it's kind of limited to, I don't know, what was it, um, 12 or something? Yeah, but uh, that's uh, one of the few things. So as you can see, I've included a pitch shifter HXS in a header file in Angel Script and there this object comes from and I just wrote that and it's this class it has a constructor that gives where you give it a size that you set the length of the um, array uh, this is a double array uh, I mean uh, a 2D array the first dimension is for the channel and the second dimension is for the actual index of the sample that holds the double um, so we set the length to audio outputs count and with a given size we uh, set both channels length to the to the size we make some helper variables set the index to zero and then we can start we have the set frequency method that has been called from the set param from the parameters uh, thing and then uh, we just set the frequency to m tune and then the process uh, method, which gets a sample value and transforms it and the channel. I don't think there's const int in this language. Oh, I would have written const int since we don't change the channel. But I don't know, whatever. Um, so first of all, we put the current sample into the buffer at the current place. And at the end, only if we have reached the maximum channel we will move on with the index but only as long as we stay below the size of the vector of the array yes the, these are arrays but this is essentially what would be a vector in um, C++ because you can resize it obviously so for each sample we make a new index a right index which is the normal index times the tune value and that's how we make the tuning effect but of course this can get out of range pretty quickly so we have to bring it back and you see we have a while loop here not an if statement so even if we go way beyond the size we will always go back to a reasonable uh, value and then there's the method get interpolated sample which takes an index value in the channel and you can see it's just the usual in, uh, linear interpolation stuff with the floor index and the ceiling and a value that says the fraction between those and then the typical mix algorithm that mixes these two and gives a sample back. Yeah, and that's basically how stuff works in here. Um, let's see. I want to demonstrate something to you. Yeah. Now let's try something very ridiculous. This is a method that is supposed to um, give back a double uh, and now we give it back a string. So let's see what happens now. And we see it won't load because it failed to initialize the script and then we can see at the log no conversion from const string to double available also unreachable code and where is this? it's in the pitch shifter in line 32 and 34 so we can, can go there and we see uh, yeah that's what that was it Now the code is not unreachable anymore and the nonsense is also gone. And we see that it works again. One thing, one note though, um, one thing that doesn't work very well in this plugin is when you make a while loop that is endless, then your door will hang up and you will have a complete crash of the door. <laughs> but I guess 
that's to be expected with an endless while loop so let's pretend like what what did i just want to do hmm. i had another idea for this oh yeah i just wanted to uh, show you another way of debugging stuff in plug and script because i know that this is always very important so let's let's pretend that we forgot to make this and now we will load the script error processing script failed we went out of bounds with with any error uh, array in line 32 and we see this is the line where we get an error and we have to find out which uh, of these indexes causes the error obviously it's, th it's the ceiling index so what would we do here we would go print floor index plus and then make a little space so we can nicely see the difference and now we can just go ahead and reload the script and see what the log says Now we see the log shows us that the index value tries to go out of bounds. If we also had the complete size of the array in um, our print statement, now we would see that 24 is probably the size. And now it goes out of bounds. So we go back to it and add the line back. And now let's also add the size because it made no sense to not show that. And now we see that it actually works very well. When this is at 32, we s see it always twice because it shows for each ch um, for each channel. So when this is uh, 23. This is zero because it goes one up and then finds out it's on the size. It needs to go down to zero again. And it can go on endlessly. Now you see there is um, this window which always shows us the current values. And if we hit play now. We notice that things are a little bit buggy. But it's not very terrible. Let's see the audio performance. So if if this was juice, then uh, due to the debug um, um, message, we wouldn't even hear a lot of sound because debug always kind of makes everything very laggy. But in plug and script, we can just debug stuff with print and it will be more or less fine now let's get rid of the print statement and see if anything changes about the consumption and we see yes of course so debugging is in all um, frameworks a thing that takes a lot of load but in this one it's still a little bit more reasonable Yeah, this is a lot of fun, in my opinion, but I don't want to make this video too long, so I say goodbye for now.